Thank you, Rebecca. And I'm glad to be one of the things once you've been through an experience like that and the world has shown their love and support to your community, you feel compelled to speak on the issue and help other mayors and other cities where you get our lessons learned. And unfortunately, you all now have experience that we wish we did not have. But um, let me just speak quickly about Orlando. Orlando, everybody knows Orlando. All around the world, we had 68 million visitors last year. But I don't think until Pulse people realized what a compassionate city we were and how we embraced diversity and inclusion and we were very collaborative. And that was important in the response to what happened on June 12th. So I had gone to bed on Saturday night and got the call about 2 30 that no mayor ever wants to get and called as mayor. This is Deputy Chief Bobby Toledo. There's been a shooting at the Pulse nightclub. There are multiple casualties. Um, it's now a hostage situation. Um, your uh, police liaison officer is on his way to pick you up, and the command center will be uh, on Orange Avenue and across from Nothing Donuts. So, my first call, my first call was I am the father of a 26 21 year old, and the Pulse nightclub is, a, is largely an LGBTQ haven, but everybody or anybody can get a Pulse nightclub. So, I called my son and lives in Orlando. I don't know if he's ever been there, um, but I just wanted to make sure he was on the safe path. Fortunately, he had in fact plugged his phone in, so it was charged up and answered the phone. And uh, it enabled me with a clear mind to be able to go what I needed to do. I immediately picked up my deputy chief of staff, who's our lead person in communications. And as we drove to the command center, we talked about what is my role in something like this. And during the active part of it, um, we wanted to make sure that I stayed out of the way, number one. Number two, that it supported the police chief's decision making and line of command. And then number three, to gather much, as much information as we possibly could. So I'm on site about three, and they let me know what's occurred. There's a gunman, and they're not sure at this point whether there's only one gunman. There are multiple casualties, the estimate from just one of the officers that's on the inside is at least 20 that are dead. And they have um, pinned the shooter down in one of the bathrooms, but there are hostages inside in the bathroom. I'm not gonna go through everything that transpired, but eventually um, the decision was made to breach the bathroom, breach the back wall. And uh, at that point, we had saved everybody that was alive. Um, except for the people that were still in the bathroom where the shooter was. The shooter was engaged and killed. Um, and at that point, I, was, I should have mentioned in the command center, it was me, the police chief, a couple deputy chiefs, three sheriffs from surrounding counties, the FBI, the FDLE, which is our state police. So a lot of collaboration and cooperation. And I was really proud of how everybody worked together to support the chief and his decision making. Shooter's dead, we start talking about how to inform the public. Um, the FBI immediately declared that we were no longer in charge. They were in charge that it was a terrorist act. So that changes the equation a little bit on the decision making, but we were pretty adamant about the fact that I needed to be the lead spokesman because as great as the FBI agent was and is, nobody knew who he was, and he was gonna set a different tone than an elected leader set. So we had to wait a couple hours before we could have the first press conference because um, the bad guy had indicated that he had bombs inside the building, so we had to clear the building in that fashion. And in his car, we um, didn't think having a press conference and having a car blow up in the background would instill the right tone that we wanted to set. So we wanted to make sure that we were able to provide accurate, concise information that we were able to calm the public and tell them that we've got this and that they were safe. And I've learned a lot about responses to terrorism since June the 12th that I didn't know at the time, um, but I learned that there are two common responses to an act like that. One is fear, um, of, especially the other one, they don't know why it happened. And then the second is either anger or hatred toward the individual that committed the atrocity or his group. 
So one of the things that we did right off the bat was I came out and gave a unifying message. And it was, we're not going to be defined by this heinous act by the courageous killing. We're going to be defined by how we respond. And we're going to respond with love, compassion, and unity. And that was the tone of the set at the very first press conference. And it directed our citizens on how to respond. And that's exactly what they did. And all over the world, we felt the love and compassion that came to us. And we had a series of press conferences, um, but we only had them when we had the information to convey. We didn't have press conferences to just have a press conference. And of course, the news media descended upon us. Um, the first press conference, we didn't know how many people had actually died. So at the conclusion of that, the, the um, media had assumed that there were 20. And as I turned to walk away from the press conference, I was informed that, in fact, there were 49 plus the shooters, so 50. Then I told the chief, we have got to the very next press conference, make sure we're accurate about that, to get that information out, because we can't have the number change over the course of time. And probably the toughest thing I did in the course of the whole thing was come back out for the second press conference. And I had to take 70 breaths to let everybody end up know that the number was not 20, but the number was 50 that were dead. From there, I, I just marveled all the time about how our community responded in every way. And um, people were looking for what could they do to help. So lines went over the blood center, you know, 3D, and every type of uh, necessity that people needed were put together. Um, and then it was from all over the world. I mean, you would see pictures of the Eiffel Tower lit up in rainbows all over. So I went to this conference mayors a couple weeks later and kind of gave up. Here's lessons learned. And almost every mayor came up with a great screenshot of here's our city hall, here's our iconic bridge lit up in rainbow colors, and we could feel that. The other thing that took on um, uh, was a task that you don't think about uh, immediately is um, sitting up, uh, setting up the family reunification center and eventually assistance center. So that was mostly our staff. A couple of them are out here today that actually ran that center. Um, and we cared for a lot of people, and um, that was difficult for them because they're not trained in that type of activity. And I'll only make two other points, and I'm going to get like seven minutes. But we do a lot of training, um, but you can never be trained to look for something like that. That's going to occur. But so many of our police officers, my other one operators, and others said, when it was happening, the training just kicked in. And sometimes we don't like to do all that training, but we realize how important it was. And we always do a, an exercise, a big tabletop emergency response. And usually the centers on our heads go more than one of them. But when um, Ferguson and Baltimore, having occurred uh, within the past four months, we did a civil disobedience exercise for the training that year, and we set up some communication protocols because um, the new modern era, they're getting information from everywhere, so uh, we had decided that it was a natural disaster type of event, the mayor's turn of need would be believed, but if it was a type of event that Colts turned out to be, that OPD would be, and nobody else could put out any information that was not information that was quickly put out by OPD. And um, we're also correcting the bad information that was going out there. So I could talk about it for another hour or so, but I'll just um, get back in the page with some questions. Thank you.